Greetings, everyone. JC here for Interface, and we're going to have a lot of fun today because what we're going to do is we're going to install Linux, and we're going to show you how it is done. Linux is an operating system that is totally free. There are several distributions of Linux, and you can pick one of those. Usually go online, go to the web page, and download the uh, version that you want and then burn it to a DVD or CD and then use that to install it in your computer because it's a bootable DVD or CD. You can also use that same CD or DVD in what's known as a live environment where you actually run the operating system off of the DVD without changing anything in your computer and this is a great way to evaluate it before you decide whether you want to actually jump in and install it on your computer. So today we're going to be doing it from a virtual environment, but I'm going to show you how to get your copy. We're going to be installing Linux Mint 9, which is my favorite distribution. It is the most functional and the most friendly version of Linux I have ever come across, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is trying Linux for the first time. So we go to the Linux Mint page. You can poke around here and look at all the different uh, flavors of Linux Mint 9 that are available. Here you see a picture of Linux Mint with the KDE desktop. There's Fluxbox, which is another desktop for Linux. And uh, we'll also uh, be able to get a version of this in the GNOME desktop. So as you can see down here, here are all the different desktops that are available, which is absolutely great. We'll be getting the GNOME desktop, okay? Now the reason why we're going to be doing GNOME is uh, simply because I think that it is the easiest desktop for anyone who is coming to Linux for the first time from a Windows environment. And it's also my favorite because uh, it's very simple, very intu intuitive and easy to use. KDE tends to be a bit challenging. So we'll go over here to Downloads and we scan down and as you can see we have all kinds of different versions of this operating system available to us. Now, if you just want to play around with it and look at it, you might want to try and download the live CD. However, if you think you may be installing the operating system at some point, then you're definitely going to want to look into the live DVD version, which has some more software that comes with it. Now, each version of this is 32-bit or 64-bit. I suggest going with 32-bit, even if you have a 64-bit machine. And the reason is, is because you're going to find uh, easier installation of software, more software available, and uh, better compatibility. Although, uh, you can dive into the 64 if you like, if you uh, intend to actually you know, keep it around for a while, because if you want to switch from 32 to 64, you're going to have to reinstall from scratch, okay? You can't upgrade from 32 to 64 once you have it installed. So we will choose the DVD version here. And come down here. And as you can see, we have several mirrors available to us. Make that a little smaller so we can fit it all on the screen. Just pick the uh, country that you're in, or the one that's closest to you, and then pick a mirror that's closer to you. In my case, it would be the University of Tennessee. And there are mirrors available all over the world for Linux Mint. Universities usually maintain a repository of Linux operating systems for you to choose from. Once you actually download the file, you'll need to burn it to a DVD or CD. And you can do that with uh, disk burning software. Uh, in Windows 7, that is an embedded utility. If you're running Windows XP, there are several freeware disk burners available to do that and you can also use uh, the Nero disk burner to do that as well. So let's go ahead and get the installation started of Linux Mint 9. Now that we have our DVD burnt from our ISO image, let's go ahead and boot that up and take a look at what that's going to look like. And we're booting it in VMware Workstation running on Windows 7 but it would look the same if you booted it on a regular computer. The installation uh, is pretty much the same process as we roll through. So we're booting the DVD and this takes a little while uh, simply because we are operating at DVD speeds. So throughout the rest of this video I will be pausing the recording to uh, compress time a little bit. In actuality this will probably take you anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour uh, before you have the system completely installed. Now the DVD has booted. We got the sound that came up, which is good to hear because uh, 
that means that uh, the sound is operating and it has recognized the hardware on the machine. It takes it a couple of moments to uh, get itself populated on the desktop here simply because we are running from a DVD and uh, the menu icon should pop up shortly. There it is. And you can take a look at uh, the menu itself. You're not going to see the all pro. Well, this time we did. The last time I tried this, it didn't show all programs. And uh, this is all of the programs that are already pre-installed on the DVD. You can run them, look at them, play around with them. Um, we have web access already. And take your time, goof around with the system. If you decide that you want to install it, well, this is how we do that. So we'll show you how that's done. And here we are at the install screen. The first thing it's going to ask you is what language you would like to work in. We're going to say English. For most viewers of this video, that will probably be right. It will try and identify what time zone you're already in. And in this case, it's absolutely right. We're in the Eastern time zone, so that's fine. We'll select that and keep going. Now it's going to ask about our keyboard. We're going to say that it's a standard USA keyboard. If yours is different, you may want to choose something else. Now we're at the partitioning part of the installation process, and this is very important. In this case, because we're doing it in a virtual environment, uh, of course, it's not seeing any operating system on the computer. However, if you already had a version of Linux loaded or a version of Windows, it's going to ask you if you want to do a dual boot or if you want to just blow out what's on the machine and start from scratch. So be very careful here. You can also go through and set up uh, your partitioning as to exactly how much space you would like to give Linux as compared to Windows. Uh, by default, it will split it in half, but you can give Linux as little as 20 gigabytes, and it will run very happily in that environment. If you're going to be doing a dual boot, I would suggest that before you attempt it, uh, do as much research on that process as you can on the web so that you understand exactly what you're getting into and how you can get yourself out of it if you should decide that you no longer want to dual boot Linux on your machine. We're going to go ahead and accept uh, Linux filling up the entire drive. And we're going to put in a name. Interface Webcast. And you'll see that it chooses the first name. So if you put in Bob Smith, then your default account name would be Bob. Choose a password. Choose carefully. I suggest uh, choosing something short and memorable because you will be using it a lot in your Linux installation. It will give you a suggestion for a computer name. If you don't really care, you can stick with that. However, if your computer is going to be on an environment, I would suggest doing the name of the computer as in like Dell Linux or Dell Linux Mint. In this case, we'll call this VM since we're running in VMware. There's all our information still there, so we can keep going forward. And there you'll see we have a list of everything we put in. And if that looks like what you want it to be, then click Install. The, insta the installation program is going to pop up, and you will see that the bar across the bottom uh, continues across. Now, this is completely automated and will take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So we're going to pause here, and then when we come back, we are going to restart the system and get into Linux Mint for the first time. Our installation is complete, and the installer prompted us to restart and remove the disk, and we did, and here we are. We are at the login screen. So this is how you will log into your fresh new Linux account. Just put it, your password in. As you can see, it has our name up there, and just realized I forgot the E in webcast. Now you can change that if you notice <laughs> that you did a, a stupid you know, typo like that, so uh, don't be too upset if uh, it doesn't look quite right to you either. Okay, and we're booted up. We heard the sound, which means that we're good to go. Here is the welcome screen. You can elect to leave that coming up or, or turn it off once you uh, get through using it. Has a lot of really cool links in there. Now the very first thing that you're going to want to do after you install your Linux Mint is to run the update manager. And all you have to do is click on the shield, enter your password, and the update manager will come up. And before you do anything else with the system, this is a very good idea to go ahead and do this 
and uh, have it go and search for all the updates so you'll have the most secure and stable version of Linux. Most major distributions have an update manager and um, it is a good thing to go ahead and update before you do anything else with the system. So there you'll see we'll have uh, all of our updates. Just click install updates and uh, that's simple. It will take care of itself. And now, uh, now that we have it installed, we can go on and uh, upgrade our browser to Google Chrome, which happens to be my favorite. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to do before we wrap up the video. Just open up Firefox, type in Google Chrome, search it out here, click download. We are running a 32-bit Debian-based Linux, and it knows this because uh, it can detect the version when you uh, go in there. So if you install OpenSUSE or an RPM type of Linux, uh, Red Hat base, uh, it will know the difference, and it will give you the proper installer. So instead of clicking that, let's click that, and it offers to uh, open it with the Deb package installer, and we want that to happen for sure. And here we go. Just click install package and Google Chrome will become a part of our Linux system. Also you can check out the software center for more software. 30,000 titles available for Linux Mint and most other uh, distributions of Linux and they're all absolutely free. Installation has finished. Close. And we can close the installer there. And all we need to do is go check and see that it made it into the menu. There's Google Chrome. And we'll launch that to make sure it works. And while it's launching, I can do this. I'll go ahead and start Google Chrome now. While it's launching, I'm going to go over here and go into uh, find the icon again. Let's say I want to show it in my favorites. I love Linux Mint. It's my favorite distribution of Linux. If we go look at favorites, well, there's Google Chrome. Move it up here. Push Firefox out of the way. Remove from favorites. Google Chrome is now our default web browser in Linux Mint. Here we go. Um, now we have Chrome. Let's make sure that it works. One of the beautiful things about installing Google Chrome in a 32-bit Linux environment is the fact that it works right out of the box. And we should be able to play a YouTube video. And we are good to go. And that is basically it. Have fun playing with your installation of Linux. It is a very challenging and interesting operating system to get to learn. For interface, I'm JC.